Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We bless your name, God. We say have your way this morning, God. Lord, we welcome you, God, into this place. We give you glory, honor, and praise this morning, God, for another opportunity to rejoice and be glad in the day that you created. We honor you today, God, because you are Lord. There is nothing that happens without your okay, without your sanction, Father. And even with that, that means that there is your protection. We thank you for your heavenly protection this morning. We thank you for your angelic protection this morning. We thank you that the steps of our feet are ordered by you, God. Lord, we thank you today, God. Lord, we ask even now, God, that you would just dispatch your angels to cancel any distraction, Father God, any interruption or interference in Jesus' name of this broadcast, that those who need this, that those who desire this, Father God, that those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will not have a problem of getting on and watching, God, and being filled, God. Lord, we thank you. We say have your way this morning. As always, we have no agenda, no program. We say have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, bless your manservant this morning, Pastor Calvin, Lord, with what you have assigned him to pour out today to the people, Father God. Lord, we don't want to just be believers. We want to be disciples. We want to understand what we can do. We want to understand the scripture and we want to be able to apply it to our life. We bind every hindrance against him this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you just flank him on each side with angels, Father God, of protection that would allow this word to come forth without any interruption, Father. Cover him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father. And even now, Father God, in the midst of everything that's going on, we just pray, Father, that you would just lead people, God, that you would lead them, Father God, so they can have a sure right now word, God, to apply to their lives today. We bless those who watch, God. We ask even now that you just keep blessings upon them in Jesus' name. We pray that you would just cancel the enemy's assignment on their life and that this information coming forward, Father God, would give them the key to unlock the door so they can walk free into their liberty and their deliverance, God. Lord, have your way this morning. There is no other way but your way. Your way is the perfect way. We honor you. We praise you. We lift you up, God. Be high and lifted up in all the earth, Father God. Release your angels this morning, God. Lord, we pray for healing, God. We pray for deliverance, God. We pray, Father God, for everything hindering the people of God to be broken. And for those who don't know you, to seek, Father. Your word says, seek and you shall find. So we pray that they seek, Father God. We pray that they come to the table and eat, God. We pray, God, that even now, oh, the restlessness among the people has them searching for something more, searching for something besides instant gratification, searching for something that is not just pleasure, but something that gives them the promise of eternal life. We thank you this morning, God. Have your way in Remnant International Church today. Do what only you can do, Father God. We decrease so that you can increase in us. I praise your holy name this morning, God. We lift you up, God. There's no name higher, God. I thank you this morning. We thank you for waking up. We thank you for being able to gather together. We thank you, Father God, for even being able to make this broadcast so others can, can partake of it. We just give you all the glory. Father, we're not going to be downtrodden. Our countenance is not going to be fallen today. But we just rejoice that you are still Lord and you are still on the throne, Father God. There is nothing that can hinder you. There is nothing that can hinder the move of God in our lives. So I just thank you this morning, God. 
I just praise your holy name. And I just say, do what only you can do, God. We just praise you this morning. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you that we're here another day to just lift up our hands and lift up our voices and give you praise. We want to welcome all of those who've never watched us before. We are Remnant International Church. Our, our mandate is to disciple believers and help set the captives free. Amen? Amen? So we want more of God and less of us. We've been doing a series. I hope you've been following along. If you haven't, you can go back on our channel. Um, and watch the replays of the previous segments of the teaching. Mm -hmm. we're, well, I'm going to let Pastor Calvin tell you the book that we're reading from today. But it's been good. It's been eye-opening. It's been life-changing for me. I pray that it's been life-changing for you. Amen. So right now, I just encourage you, give God some praise wherever you are. Lift up your voice and thank him because so many did not wake up in the land of the living today. So many didn't wake up this morning feeling well with the full use of their limbs. So give God glory. And as Pastor Calvin comes forth, I pray that you all have an ear to hear what the Lord is using him to say and teach and then apply it to your life so you can walk in deeper degrees of freedom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. We just lift you up this morning, Lord God, just thanking you for this new day that you have made. As we rejoice, even in the midst of things that are going on, we can still rejoice because we know that we are covered by the blood of Jesus, Lord God, that we surrender our lives to you, Lord God. Father, help us in our daily walk with you, Lord God. Father, we come this morning lifting up all those, Lord God, that don't know where to turn, Lord God, that don't know who to go to to seek comfort, Lord God, yes. that are being comforted by others and still can't feel comfort because of what's going on, Lord God. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that they would open up your word and establish a relationship yeah. or bring back that relationship that they previously had, Lord God. We pray now, Lord God, that the peace that passes all understanding would rain down on your people, Lord God, that after they surrendered and submitted themselves to you, after they've established a relationship, Lord God, that a peace, Lord God, would come from a relationship with you this morning, Lord God. Father, we just lift up the people, Lord God. We lift up the homeless, Lord God, yes. that don't really have a place to shelter, right. Lord God, that are out in the open, Lord God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that they too would be covered, Lord God. We lift up everyone in a nursing home, Lord God, or in a hospital bed right now. Those that already have symptoms, those that are already going through, we lift them up to you this morning in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Those with weakened immune systems, Lord yes. God. Those, Lord God, that are fearful, Lord God. Father, we lift them up to you this morning in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we pray, Lord God, that somehow, some way, Lord God, that they can come to you, Lord God, that whether there's a Bible in their home that hasn't been opened in who knows how long, whether there's a show on television, Lord God, that leads them to you, whether it's music, Lord God, whether it's a relative or friend picking up the phone and praying with them, Lord God, that people would humble themselves, Lord God, and seek your face, Lord God, that this is the time for relationship. If the people that are following in the religion they're in 
can't bring them to comfort, Lord God. Father, we pray that they would understand the difference between religion and relationship, Lord God, and establish the relationship with you this morning, Lord God. Father, help your people, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, in our walk with you, Lord God. Father, help us to stand on your promises. Help us to stand on your word. Help us to walk in faith and not by sight, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you, Lord God. Help us this morning, Lord God. From the top of this world, Lord God, to the bottom, Lord God, as the north is from the south and the east is to the west, Lord God. Every country, every land, every territory, all belong to you, Lord God. Father, help them, Lord God, to discover who you are. Help them, Lord God, to find a peace, Lord God, that only comes from a relationship with you, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, in our time of need, Lord God, that those that already know you, Lord God, may lift up someone else, Lord God, draw men and women unto you in this time, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to be who you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Remnant International. We just thank God for another Sunday morning service. We're praying that the people of God are standing up and being the examples that God has called them to do in, a in this specific time, that people are in panic things, that we, as the sons and daughters of the Most High God, have to be walk in faith. We have to walk in faith. Everything that we go through is a test. Every day is a test. And what's going on right now is no different than anything else. So we pray now that the people that have already submitted to God can be an example, can be a comfort, can help someone in their time of need. Whether it's lifting up a prayer, whether it's doing something for them, picking up something for them, whatever God puts on your heart, Follow after that voice, whatever we need to be doing, not just understand about sheltering it in place, but see what your neighbors are needing or wherever you can help. Make sure that we be a helpful people. Just pray for everybody this morning in Jesus' name. Father, I just want to decrease and pray that you increase as I share this information from this book, Lord God, praying in the name of Jesus that people understand about the spiritual realm, Lord God, that even this, this attack, Lord God, come from the spirit realm. We rebuke those people, Lord God, that said you've released something on the earth, Lord God. Father, help them to understand. Help them to get it right, Lord God. Help us to come together, Lord God, where we may know, Lord God, no God who sacrifices a son for everyone, Lord God, would then come and release this on us, Lord God. Father, help us, Lord God, and our daily walk with you, Lord God. Help your people, Lord God, to not be manipulated by those that are sending these things to come up against us, Lord God. Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, Pastor Linda was talking about us sharing a book, Strong Man's His Name, What's His Name, by Drs. Jerry and Cal Robinson. And to me, it's ironic that we're sharing this in a time like this. There's people not understanding that, is thinking it's just a virus and stuff, but everything has a root. Yes. Most of this we talked about ending with roots and stuff, roots are causes and stuff. And people don't understand that the word is telling us and in teaching and when you have a relationship with God, it's saying that all the enemy needs is a crack. Mm -hmm. A crack. And there are so many cracks all over the world. There's so many cracks in the way we live our lives. There's so many cracks in the way we teach, treat each other. There's so many cracks that the enemy is just walking on through. And this coronavirus, CBD, whatever it is, 19, 
COVID-19 is just another entranceway for the enemy to come up against people and put a blame on God. See, if you're not walking, if you don't have a relationship with God, you don't know. And that's what we try to do by sharing this book. So we don't just see things from a natural perspective anymore, but we can see it from a spiritual perspective. What better time than now than to spend that personal time with God and seeking his face? You're already closed in. Everything that's on television is repeats and everything else and stuff like that. Yeah, there could be a lot of different things we're doing, but the thing that counts the most is making sure you're picking up your word. Yes. And spending some time with our Father. Making sure you're lifting up a prayer. Not just for your home and your protection. It's the whole world going through. Pandemic means worldwide and stuff. Then we got to be praying for the whole world to come through. Thank you, Jesus. If we were all lifting up prayers together all over the world to the one and only true God, this pandemic would never be able to come. Thank you, Jesus. And maybe that's what God is trying to say in things. He's trying to send us a message. We have to discern it. This week in this chapter, we wanted to share about perversion. Spirit of perversion. Now, sometimes some people think about perverts. I remember um, calling people perverts and stuff. And sometimes we, we joked about it, right? Some people were proud to be a pervert. Yeah, I'm a pervert. Yeah, come check me out and stuff like that. But then you find out that there's other kind of perverts in, in things. Perversion that's not of God. None of it is of God. Amen. That's what this virus is. A perversion. The definition of perverse is of a person or their actions showing a deliberate and obstinate desire to behave in a way that's unreasonable or unacceptable, often in spite of the consequences. Now that right there is just telling you exactly what it is. God has asked us to do things from a certain perspective and we can't do it. So, and spite, there are consequences to that, right? Amen. I'm not, again, I'm not saying God's brought this coronavirus on the land and stuff. I'm just saying that when we decide to do things from our perspective, there are consequences. So the enemy, just like God has sent his called people to share his word. He's called forth apostles. He's called forth uh, pastors, uh, bishops, preachers, teachers, uh, evangelists. He's called forth everybody who has submitted to his will and way to go and share the gospel. Hallelujah. So God has called forth his men and women to fight the good fight for him. Don't you think the enemy is doing the same thing? That clown never had an original thought or an idea. Everything he does is trying to imitate God, Amen. but from the positive to the negative aspect. Amen. It says contrary to the accepted or expected standard of practice. God put a standard for mankind, and we just took it to the left. Mm -hmm. That was my Amen. And, and we talked about the sexually perversion, sexually perverted. We don't have to talk about that. People know what sexual perversion is and, and things. Mm -hmm. When I was reading this book, it was talking about a better way of interpreting this passage would be that because of Egypt's continual sin, God took his hands off the situation, allowing the perverse spirit to lead the nation into all kinds of problems. Just think about that for a minute. I'm going to read that again. A better way of interpreting this passage would be that because of Egypt's continual sin, God took his hands off the situation, allowing the perverse spirit to lead the nation into all kinds of problems. 
if God is sending different people and trying to share and tell us something, and then we don't want to listen because he blessed us with something called free will. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be God and just say, listen, you're going to listen or I'm going to make you listen. If God is giving us a gift, he's not going to be a God that takes it back. Right. So if he took it back, then we would all fall in line, right? But he said if he took it back, then we'd all be robots. We'd all be like he he wants us to be a people of free will. Yes. He's given us a mindset to know right from wrong. The things that we should or shouldn't do. There's no, I don't know too many people that haven't messed up in some way or another. But after you messed up, then you've seen your ways and knowing that this isn't something that I'm supposed to be involved in. Then we repent and seek God's face and ask him for forgiveness and make sure we don't do that again. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> but these people kept on doing it. Kept on doing it. God said, I'm going to step to the side and let them do it their way. Right? There's been parents that said the same thing, right? When we're thinking that we know better than our own. Dad, you do it your way. Mm -hmm. Even in businesses and jobs, people have lost their businesses because you have people that God may have assigned to put in your life to help you in your business and think, such as my wife and what she does, um, to teach you and show you, but then you don't want to listen. You think that you've grabbed enough information and now you're thinking that you don't need her no more, that you can do it on your own and that you can do it better. And then what happens to your business? It falls by the wayside. There's no difference in what God is saying. I'm like, he's not going to have to fight for your love. He sacrificed his son. Right. That should be enough. That's right. Every day God is doing things for us. Every day. We can't even imagine the different things that he's fighting. And we're talking about from the spiritual realm. So there's some of us that don't even have the discernment to see the things that are going on in the spirit realm. And if an attack came up against you and was just about to take you out, you can't even see the angel that's coming to save you. You're just going about your day, la, 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 you know, just doing your thing and stuff like that and not even knowing. God is saving us for a purpose. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you. And even the things that we know of have happened. We may be in the moment just thinking of you might have went to church that Sunday because God saved me for something. Then you might have went to church again the next Sunday and God saved me from something. Then the third Sunday comes and be like, oh, okay, I don't really have to go no more and stuff. I already said thank you because I went twice and stuff. But dude, can you really just walk away from that? Amen. Amen. I'm working saving grace every day, every, day. every moment. Not just for me, but for everybody. Mm -hmm. Not just for my family, but for everybody. Not just for our children, but for everybody. Everybody is our brothers and sisters. That's why we get up each Sunday to come and share a word. That's why we're on a Bible study prayer call, learning and growing so that we can share and help God's people be saved. Amen. Amen. He said, he, he said, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. In Romans, the first chapter, the 28th verse, it said, when people insist on doing the unnatural, God steps back and the reprobate mind moves in. In this state, they become so twisted in their thinking process, they believe their lifestyle is actually normal. Jesus. This attitude is evident even in the homosexual community today as they seek respectability for their perverted practices. It's in the book. It's in God's book. It's in this book that we're reading. It's not of God. Amen. But God's word has not changed. 
perversion is still perversion. Yes. Can I repeat that? Mm -hmm. God's word has not and will not change. Perversion is still perversion. God didn't create two men or two women in the Garden of Eden. Thank you, Jesus. He created a man and he created a woman for that blessed union. That was the prototype of sexual behavior for the human race. Times, customs, and philosophies have changed since that time, but God's word has not. Those who obey the word receive God's blessings, and those who don't not only feel the displeasure of God, but experience the result of their perversion. God is trying to tell us something. Now that's just one act of perversion. There's many. You can talk about when um, these grown men want to molest children, right? Think about all the missing children all over the world, right? You think about slavery still going on, and now slavery isn't so much to bring people out in a cornfield like they did with folks that looked like me a, long, a while back and stuff. Not too long back. Not too long back. Now it's for sexual perversion so that people can do what they want to make to young boys and girls and even some older people and things. Sexual perversion, kidnapping people, shooting them off to different countries, even different cities within the U.S. so that they can utilize them to give people pleasure, sexual perversion, just perversion. Yes, yes. And that's what it is, again, the enemy is finding that small crack. We keep trying to say that it's okay. The world keeps trying to tell us that it's okay to do certain things, that it's okay. I've been seeing that there was a law where people was trying to push that it was okay for an older adult to have sex with a little six-year-old. Help us, God. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, God. The perverse strong man delights in seeing how far he can detour mankind from God's blueprint or human conduct. If God's word commands one thing, the perverse spirit seeks to lead humanity in the opposite direction. Think about that and how true that is. Think about that and how true that is. They talked about people in uh, homosexual relationships. I'm not going to break down all the different groups, but they know who they are and, and we know who they are. And the thing is, what they did was say that um, God hates them because they decide to go and do this. God doesn't hate anybody. I keep saying that over and over and over again. Let me illustrate. Those people who are whispering in your ear, this is what they use. The perverse straw man delights in seeing how far he can detour mankind from God's blueprint for human conduct. If God's word commands one thing, the perverse spirit seeks to lead humanity in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? You do that by saying that that loving God who sacrificed his son hates you because you want to live a certain lifestyle. No, he doesn't hate you. If he hated you, he wouldn't have sacrificed his son for you. That sacrifice covered me and you. Amen. You and me. Amen. What he hates is the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He's wrote, it's been written in, it's told. Everything that, pe when people want to do things that are contrary to the word of God, it's almost like they go straight to the Bible and find out God said don't do this, so we're going to make sure we do this. If God said don't do this, we're going to make sure that we do this. It's like, just like I said before, if the in war, let's talk about war. In war, 
the way they win a war is to send spies out, right? They even had that in the Old Testament, right? When Joshua sent the spies out and one came, some came back and said there were giants in the land. They're, the enemy inserts people into the uh, person they're fighting, ranks and stuff, just to cause confusion and things, right? Amen. So in that, you mess up the way of their way of thinking and doing things, and then you can come in and overcome them. <clears throat> the enemy's doing the same thing. I said it over and over again from this very pulpit. Media. Yes. Television is the quickest way. Movies. The same thing. Why do we have so many killing movies? Killing, killing, killing. Why do we have all these zombie movies? Why do we have these movies and things with these seances and trances and stuff? And you got people watching them, and you got kids wanting to repeat them and do the yeah. thing, same things, right. not realizing that that's what these people who worship the enemy actually do. And sometimes they're giving you the exact words that they use so that you can, they can find up manipulating you to also worship in the God that they serve. And when you don't make it to heaven and you don't understand them why, it's because you was worshiping the enemy and didn't even know it. Jesus. He talked about manipulating spirits. That's where the manipulating spirit comes from. If that's why the word says we have to be in God's word. Yeah. We have to seek his face. We, people have been uh, being kept home and quarantined for a while now and things. How many of us have already picked, are picking up the Bible and reading? Mm. How many of us are reading it to our families, those men that are in the households, those head of households and things, just taking time to come, family, let's go, and where are we going to go in the house and stuff, and I want to read this to you, and we can talk about it. Or just coming together and pray. And again, I'm telling you, yeah, some people, when you talk about praying, the only praying that they can do is for my family. Oh, God, protect me and my family, protect our house, protect our cars, and all. I'm not talking about just people just praying for themselves. We, as people of God, have to pray for all of our brothers and sisters. Amen. That's right. Everyone. Those that are saved and those that are unsaved. Hallelujah. That they too may have an opportunity to seek God's face. That they too may have an opportunity to enter the kingdom of God. Please get this today. He said, Isaiah shows how much Satan has succeeded in doing just that through the centuries. The word said in Isaiah, the 55th chapter, you need to read the whole book of Isaiah, but you can, you can go in 55 to start too. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, mm -hmm. neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts, your thoughts. We can't compare in thoughts compared to God. That's right. But then you got people thinking that they know better. Like, God made a mistake. I was supposed to be a girl. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It says right here, right in I, the book of Isaiah, way back then, he was trying to tell you that you're going to be manipulated. Now he's talking about what? Days, right? Days and stuff like that. That you're either, you're either a boy or a girl and stuff like that. I mean, when will it stop? I'm going to call one person a they. And the dictionary is following it too, through with too, right? They're putting that in the dictionary, I believe. I believe it. Mm -hmm. And want to teach it to our children in schools. So if you're not as the head of your household, whether it's the father's there, whether it's the mother's there, taking time out to sit your children down and teach them about God and his word. When they do set them in school, you don't know what they're teaching them anymore. Right. Yeah. We need to sit down and go over every class, everything they learn, mm -hmm. so that we can rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Then go the next morning to that school and say, listen, 
My son doesn't believe in that. We don't believe in that. We're Christians. We believe in God. Or take them out of the school if you have to. Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. It says the unregenerated man is not synchronized with God's universe. Sin has twisted him so that right is wrong, dark is light, a lie is the truth, Satan is credible, and God is out of date. Wow. Let's stop right there. Put on the brakes. Ain't that what we're talking about, right? That's what we've been talking about since I got up here, right? Sin has twisted him. All those agents of Satan that are watching. I know, yeah, they had a show on television. I don't know if it's still on. Agents of Shield, right? But he got, Satan got agents too and stuff. They go out making sure they twist our mindset away from the, away from the word of God when we don't see the things that God said is perverse as per, per, perverse anymore. That it should be acceptable because God is out of date. And Satan is credible, right? I mentioned a media and television show. I had sort of, they had a show on television called Lucifer. The one thing they got right is they made him look like me and you. He's not a red, red coated dude and stuff with horns and a tail and a big old pitchfork. If he wanted to, yeah, he could make himself look like that. He can even make himself look like an angel of light. But here it is in black and white telling you, this book was written even before that television show. That's right. That's right. It's telling you that we people are being manipulated by the media. He's already instilled his people in position to manipulate and take over. Look at the laws being changed. You have uh, two fathers raising children. You have two mothers raising children saying, okay, I'm going to school and I got two mommies and stuff. And people are looking at you and now like, if you come up against them or say something against them, I'm a hater or, or this or that. I'm not hating that. <clears throat> I'm hating the sin. Just as God said, but I don't have no hate for you because you're still my brother. You're still my sister. I'm still supposed to share God's work with you. We don't hate you. We hate that which you do. That which the perverted mind has said is acceptable. None of it is acceptable in God's sight. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Only the light of God can only the light of God's word can break such spiritual darkness and reveal their twisted condition. Jesus informs his disciples as well as the human race in general. In John 14, the sixth chapter, it said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's not talking about me, Pastor Calvin. When I said I, ah, he's talking about Jesus. I said Jesus said, he informed his disciples that he is the way, the truth, and the life. What we want to do is now ensure that you have that relationship with him so that you may have that life. You may have the truth. You can have and live the right way according to Jesus. God makes new creatures when we accept Christ as our Savior, but our minds must st still be reprogrammed daily yes. by the renewing power of, of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. He said he makes us new creatures when we get baptized, when we surrender ourselves to God, but we still got work to do. That's why I thank God for ministries like Overcomers in Christ, where you can go and be a part of the ministry and, and experience deliverance and different people that uh, understand how to do deliverance and things. Even with this book, if you're really surrendered and things and really want it, that you can do deliverance for yourself, for your family and break these things, 
There's so many things that we carry with us on an individual basis. Um, before most people get married, they wind up having uh, marriage counseling. If you didn't think it was important, you wouldn't be doing it. It's no different than getting marriage counseling before the marriage and the same thing after being baptized and surrendering our, surrendering our lives to God. Pastor Linda and myself said, if we were doing, getting ready to marry somebody, they'd have to go through deliverance first, even before we even thought about counseling. Or maybe the counselor would come first so it would help us with the deliverance, but then the counseling doesn't stop. It doesn't stop because you got married now. Some people go through uh, marriage counseling and it'd be one day. Not even a whole day. It could be an hour being rushed through. I don't know and stuff. But you have to think about it. It says we have work to do too. Those things that we've experienced because we weren't obedient to God's word and had to find out on our own the hard way we need to be delivered from. That's right. Yes. And there are a lot of churches that say they're doing deliverance ministries, but if you're still walking in it, if you're still carrying it, if there's still a thought, you haven't been delivered. You need to be someplace where you can be delivered. Not go to the place just so you can get deliverance and go back to the same ministry. Why would you do that? Why would you, if you're, the place where you're at and you're being ministered to on an every, every Sunday can't do the deliverance that you need and you go to a place that does the deliverance, why would you leave that place and go back to where you were? You need to steady be under that covering. Sometimes deliverance is, is more than one time. Sometimes you have to keep on going in. That spirit is stubborn. That's right. That's right. He's not giving up. He's been defeated already. Yeah. And he's still working to bring as many of us down with him as he can. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, as is in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 5th verse. That's what the deliverance is. That's what the spiritual warfare is all about. We got to bring it down. Anything that exalted itself and stuff, anything that we exalt over God, our chasing after money, our chasing after titles, our chasing after jobs, our chasing after this, our chasing after that, anything that we have put in front of God, we have to go to him. It said, only then can we have the sound mind that 2 Timothy 1 and 7 tells us is available to those who do not allow this world to press them into its mold. So it says, after we've done all these things, then we're ready. Then we can go on the front line and fight the good fight for the Lord because uh, we can't be manipulated by the enemy. We can't be manipulated by co-workers. We can't be manipulated in business. We can't be manipulated in our family because we only answer to God. Amen. If it ain't coming from God, we ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. That's the way it should be. If God didn't sign off on it, I'm not with it. If it's not a place that he said I should be, I'm not going to be there. If it's not something that he said I shouldn't take, I'm not going to intake. That's fine. The truth is that it is insane to reject a loving God who has done everything possible to save mankind from the filthy clutches of the universal pervert. Satan. Jesus. I'll read that one again too. Mm -hmm. The 
The truth is that it is insane to reject a loving God who has done everything possible to save mankind and continuously does everything possible to save mankind from the filthy clutches of the universal pervert. Understand what that is, universal pervert. Instead of retreating to our plush churches and waiting for Jesus to rapture us out of this lost world, God expects us to attack the ruler of this world as Jesus did on the cross. He cried, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do in Luke 23 and 34. Jesus knew who the real enemy was behind the cross. Those who nailed him to the cross were the perverted tools of Satan. So what he's saying is after we come into a relationship with God, after we're equipped, after we've been in his word, after we've established a relationship, we don't need to really wait for anyone to appoint you to do anything. God does all appointments. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Sometimes we can be under uh, uh, ministries and things that keep us in positions because there's a need there. But that need may not be where God has called you to be. And because you are not in the position that God has called you to, you have to answer for that. You can't really blame it on the ministry. Well, God, I was in this ministry because my family was in this ministry. You know, we've grown up, and this is the church where we're supposed to be. And they came in, and they said that they need me to do this and be in this position and do that and that. What is God saying? Amen. It's about the relationship. Amen. It's about the relationship. It's about the relationship. Amen. See where he wants to use you. Just like I said back there, well, God has done everything he can to, to make sure everything possible to save mankind. And we sit back and just, you know, it's okay. As long as I'm in a ministry and I got this title, I'm doing this and stuff, everything is okay. I'm doing what God has called me to do. I'm covered. I, I know I got my spot in heaven. Keep sitting on that and see. I'm trying to tell you, don't keep sitting on that and see. But if you don't want to listen to me, keep sitting on it and see. The Satan bundled things as usual when he allowed Jesus to enter his private domain by the way of death. When the Son of God rose from the dead, he stripped Satan, taking, key, taking the keys of death and hell with him. The book of Revelations, the first book, the 18th chapter. Jesus is the boss. Listen, <laughs> back in the day, you wanted to follow the coolest dude there was, right? You wanted to be part of that group. You want to be part of that group? There's nobody else. There's nobody else who went down to hell, took homeboy's keys, and said, what? And what? And holding them. Amen. That's right. Who else? Jesus. Now, if you want a reservation in that place, keep on doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. There's nobody else we need to be following than Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Went to his house, took his keys, but all his people, nobody can stop him. He didn't bring one angel with him. He could call legions, right? Yeah. One is more than enough for most, most situations. He went down there on his own. Think about that. <clears throat> this big bad dude who's trying to ensure that we did, we too be in his in the place where he's at. Because he can't get to heaven now. Because of his sin. <laughs> There's no other place, person I'd rather follow. Oh, Nobody else. Oh, Nobody else. Thank you, Jesus. 
Now we have been given the power to continue that dominion in the name of Jesus. Instead of the will and the fact that the world is rotten away, we must apply some of the pre preservative salt that Jesus says we are to be in this world. In the book of Matthew 5 and 13, from the book of Matthew 5 and 13, every opportunity we get, we have to take dominion over the per perverse spirits in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every opportunity. Every opportunity. Yeah, Just like we said in the beginning when I was praying, we take authority over those perverse spirits that are producing this coronavirus. Every virus, every sickness, every disease that play plagues men and women here on earth. We take it and bind it in the name of Jesus. We release the love of God, the blood of Jesus, to cleanse the land, to heal God's people, to bring us all together as one people under God. That was my opportunity. Take yours. In the name of Jesus. Whenever you encounter pornography, abortion, filthy television and movies, homosexuals, lesbians, and child abusers, sex clubs, filthy communication, false cults, and perverse speech, you can be assured a strong, a perverse strong man is in operation. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Sometimes you don't even have to just confront them. My wife and I, we like to drive a lot. It relaxes us. Well, I do the driving and stuff. She's a, a, a passenger and stuff. But uh, when we come by those clubs and those places, even the tarot place, my wife automatically just goes to warfare man mode and just start praying for those places. We're not in front doing anything or anything and stuff like that. She's lifting up a prayer against them. Driving, anytime driving, just praying. Praying through the neighborhoods you're driving through. We're not praying to beat these people up because they chose to live a different lifestyle or to take their lives. We're praying that the truth is revealed to them so that they can come back and be part of God's kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It says it's not enough to join a boycott against television sponsors. Until we begin taking dominion over evil in the spiritual arena, we will face a lot of frustration. God has given us the weapons we need to go for the enemy's jugular and bind him where it will do the most good. So let's do it. If you are tempted in any of these areas, you must go after this strong man aggressively in the name of Jesus. God's children cannot take the risk of allowing such a filthy spirit leeway in their life because the roots take hold very quickly. Hallelujah. It's time to stand up and be called for to do the work that our Father has called us to do. Perverse spirits cover um, a broken spirit, mm -hmm. evil spirits, atheists, abortion, child abuse, the filthy mind, doctrine, 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 doctrinal error. Thank you, babe. Uh, it says difficult times will come. Sex perversion, mm -hmm. um, the twisting of the words, the chronic warrior, contentiousness, incest, all those things have to be broken in the name of Jesus. And again, we always talk about the roots, right? The roots, the causes, the different things. It says, 
again from the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, the 19th verse to the 21. Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, meaning that total irresponsibility, lack of self-control, adultery, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So always from the book of Matthew 18, 18, right? Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, right? Discipline and prayer. We assure you and most solemnly say to you, whatever you bind, meaning forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful. All those perverse spirits on earth shall have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, permit and declare, the word of God, his love on earth shall have already been loosed in heaven. Yes. You bind perverse spirits yes. in the name of Jesus. Anything that's contrary to the word of God, anything that comes against his word, anything that comes against his teaching, anything that comes against the people of God, anything that takes us away from our relationship with God, our walk with God, us being who God calls us to be, we bind it now in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning we loose God's spirit of pureness, holiness, according to Zechariah 12 and 10. I will pour out of the house of David and on the people of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace, meaning unmerited favor and supplication, and they will look at me whom they have pierced, meaning Jesus, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son, and they will weep bitterly over him as one who weeps bitterly over a firstborn. The book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter and 29th verse was talking about Christ for judgment. It said, how much greater punishment do you think he will deserve who has rejected and trampled underfoot the Son of God? First of all, nobody can trample underfoot <laughs> the Son of God. Amen. I mean, if you reject it, yeah, and, and things like that. But God, he ain't going to trample him underfoot. And has considered unclean and uncommon and common the blood of the covenant that sanctified him and has insulted the spirit of grace, which imparts the unmerited favor and blessing of God. Those of you who have problems with this strong man can pray this prayer for forgiveness with us. It says, Father, I, we approach you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Forgive us for allowing a perverse spirit access to our lives. We realize these actions not only place us in spiritual danger, but also grieve your Holy Spirit. We want to please you. Father, with all our heart, cleanse us from all impurity of mind and deed. We lift up these prayers to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Then we address the evil one. Satan, in the name of Jesus, we bind your perverse spirit according to Matthew 18, 18, that tells us, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You no longer have an open door in any of our lives through this spirit. Amen. 
We end with thank you, Lord, for giving me freedom over the power, giving us freedom over the power of the devil, according to Matthew 18, 18, that promises, whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We loose God's spirit of grace and supplication, which is the Holy Spirit, to guide us in a life of purity and excellence. Help us to reprogram our minds on a daily basis by reading your word. Thank you, Lord, for confirming your word in our lives. Amen. We just thank God for this information that he shared with us today and what's going on today. I'm praying that people with a discerning spirit would be able to understand and see that maybe there are things that are going on in the spiritual realm that if I'm not taught it in a specific place, that I have to take the initiative to get it on my own to make sure and ensure my me and my, my family and myself are covered, that we are following after God's word. There's nothing wrong with um, learning and growing, especially if it's not being taught. We're not being disrespectful to anyone or anyone's ministry and stuff. It's just that if we know we are obligated to share this, it's about saving God's people. It's not about a ministry. It's not about a specific pastor or anybody else and stuff. It's about the people of God, that each and every one gets enough information where they can make the right decisions to have the relationship with God and be the overcomers in Christ that he's created each of us to be in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you for this word today. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, that I ran across this book, Lord God, and that my wife and I agree that it's something that we want to share, Lord God. Father, we're not wanting to be out of order, Lord God. Father, we're just wanting to equip the people of God with the information, Lord God, that we all need, Lord God, so that the enemy no longer has anyone bound up, Lord God, that the enemy no longer has anyone in captive, Lord God, that all manipulating spirits, Lord God, would be broken today in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that the sons and daughters of the Most High God can stand up and be counted, Lord God, that even those, Lord God, that haven't surrendered, Lord God, would get something from this that would have them hunger and thirst to want to know more, Lord God, that they would be empowered, Lord God, to fight the good fight, Lord God, to go to the front of the fight, Lord God, and do that which you have called them to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, Lord God, no matter what the situation is, Lord God, we will trust in you, Lord God. We just thank you for this time, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed, women.